Hi everybody, it's that time of year again and they just released the 2019 FTC Challenge and we are here today in the Pitsco R&D area to talk about that. I have with me Paul Utley, head of R&D for Pitsco for 27 years. Yes. I've got Aubrey Vance, uh, one of the persons, peoples responsible for professional development for Pitsco. And my name is Tim Langford. I'm the robotics application specialist here at Pitsco, and we are here to create a video to help all those newcomers uh, uh, think about strategy for the 2019 Rover Ruckus game for the FTC Challenge. That's exactly right. Now, Paul and I have been around a long time. Uh, Paul's been involved with the uh, FTC world since the uh, 2008. Around, 2000, around 2008. I've yeah. been uh, a couple years behind him, but we're kind of well known in the FTC world, anybody that's gone to world championships, but Aubrey not so much, and we did that for a purpose. She's going to be our fresh eyes on the scene. Sometimes, uh, as you know, there's the old saying, you can't see the forest for the trees, uh, meaning that you're too close to a subject to really kind of see it in a holistic yeah. way. So we want Aubrey here to give us that viewpoint of someone that's uh, seen it for the first time and might not have all the ins and outs and know anything, but she hopefully will keep us from overlooking something that we take for granted. Mm -hmm. So we're going to task you with asking all kinds of questions, and then hopefully we'll be able to answer those questions and really come up with a good strategy for you guys that are new to the game and then maybe also those that have been around a while, kind of freshen your viewpoint a little bit too so that you come up with creative strategies that we always like to see in these FTC challenges. Does that sound like a plan? Yep, yep, sounds great. Cool. Sounds great. So we do want to know though, we want to make sure very, very uh, put it out there just as plain as we can, this is not about creating a perfect solution to this year's game. That's right. Got you know it. That? No perfect this solution. Is, this is about creating strategies based on a breakdown of the game that then allow people to go ahead and say, hey, I can do that or I can modify that in my particular strategy for the game. Yes. Sound good? That sounds great. Deal. All right. Let's go. Okay. So, Aubrey just saw the video for the game release just a few minutes ago. True. And what would you think? A little overwhelming? Uh, there's just a lot of components. I just don't know where to start and all the pieces, how they all go together and what I should be focusing on. Gotcha. That's a normal reaction for somebody that's new to it. Mm -hmm. So, Paul, let's yep. see if we can help her out a little bit and break sure. down what are some of the common elements of typically any type of an FTC game. Not this game mm -hmm. in particular, but just like any of the games that you might right. want to say. What are their basic components? Absolutely. So. Basically, you know, when you approach building a robot for, for the FTC game challenge, you can, you can almost break it down into three major components. And that is, the first thing we need to be able to do is to maneuver around the playing field. So the logical place to start is our drive base or our drive chassis. Um, depending on the uh, terrain that, that uh, the game may, uh, may have, may contain, uh, depending, depending on uh, where those scoring elements might be located, is going to uh, play a big part in how you would approach to, uh, designing that drive base. Driving. So that's okay. the main thing. Driving. That's number one. So first figure out what the base of my robot's going to be and how it's going to interact with the, the floor of my Absolutely. game challenge. Absolutely. So we need to have a good understanding of that. And uh, the second is um, most FTC games are played with scoring elements located at various places on the field. Um, those scoring elements could be hard to reach. They could be behind a barrier. Um, they could be up high. Um, they could, in, in games past, we've even had game elements that set outside of the field. Ooh. Yes, yeah, so um, uh, depending on what that engineering challenge is to obtain those game pieces, you have to be able to design what goes on top of your drive chassis to be able to reach those game elements, retrieve them, and uh, get them on board your robot so that you can go deliver them to a, a scoring goal. Collection and delivery. So make sure Correct. I can get more points. Gotcha. Absolutely. Got it. Yep. What's and, the third yep. big big part of uh, most games? Well, you know, we always have we always have the autonomous period, and um, and uh, the autonomous period is going to involve some of those same uh, typical game challenges. But those were those uh, uh, is where the students will be uh, utilizing sensors to to navigate the field, okay. uh, collect game objects, and things like that. Now that that can that can play a role because you know where where those sensors are placed on your robot, you know, is going to you know, uh, that takes some planning up front. If you're a team that wants to uh, do well in the autonomous uh, portion of the game, you have to plan for that. And then, uh, you know, we also have the end game. And uh, this year's end game is very interesting because there, there is major, major bonus points to be scored if you can hang 
from the Lunar Lander at the end game. So that's an additional element. Aside from collecting game objects and scoring them, we also have the hanging element, and that's something we'll address too. All right, so this year, um, is a, we have a space theme, as everybody knows, and um, our challenge is, is to mine minerals out of a crater. And the crater has, some, uh, has a rim on it or a wall right. on it that um, uh, FTC bots are going to have to be able to climb over if you want to really get in there and get those scoring elements. If we have a game such as this that we really need to get over something like that, there's a number of different approaches you can take. Uh, what we have seen in games past, we've seen a lot of uh, teams uh, build a drive chassis with tank treads on them. So we're going to show you an example of that. Okay. Um, so we have here a, just a component of a robot. Um, obviously, you know, this would be just one side of a robot. A, a, a real drive base would have two, obviously. But what we've done is we put together, Tim actually put this together, and it's an example of how you might go about developing a tank track, is what we call this. Now this is our Tetrix tank tread kit. It comes with a number of snap together links, and it also comes with drive sprockets and what we call idler wheels. Now this one has two, if you notice, has two different ends on it. We have, yeah, I noticed that this one is just flat right here, and this one's kind of angled up. Exactly right, and I think it's pretty obvious why we took that approach. Um, I'm yes. going to make a prediction here Yes. and say that if I have this, then it kind of gives me a lip that I can drive up, kind of angles up. The Your approach angle. You yeah. got it. My approach angle. Thank you. You got it. So what we have done here is we've sacrificed a little bit of track on the ground. Okay knowing that we're going to have to climb something. And so you're exactly right. We put this angle on here, or Tim put this angle on here, so when we approach our crater wall, we've got track hitting the edge of our wall, so we'll give us a boost up the wall. So nice. yeah, that's very important. Okay. Uh, another thing this approach takes from you is when you get on the wall, because you have a continuous belt here, you're, not, you're going to have traction all the way up and over, as opposed to individual wheels to where some of the sharp points on the crater wall could get in between the wheels and cause oh. you to lose traction. Okay. So um, a tank tread is definitely a great approach uh, uh, this year for this year's game if you want to scale that crater wall. It's going to give that continuous movement to, to keep going forward. Absolutely, absolutely. Now another important thing uh, that I thought was pretty ingenious what Tim did here on this example, and Tim you may want to tell, tell him a little bit about it, is how you constructed this tensioner. Yeah, well one of the things that, uh, challenges that you always have with uh, a belt or track system is always making sure that you have good tension on the belt so it, you get good contact all the way around. So what I did with just a simple spring mechanism, I made a rocker right there that will actually move that um, that roller, this idler in the middle here, up and down and keep a good tension. So regardless of my traction and my, my orientation, my belt is always going to stay with the proper tension. Yes. That's going to help with uh, my belt slipping on my sprocket. That's the other thing we probably want to point out is depending on where you put your power, um, the, the number of teeth that are engaged around a sprocket can be very important when you uh, drive a belt. Mm -hmm. Obviously you have a, a short angle or a, an acute angle around this sprocket here means more teeth are engaged. Yeah. So there's going to be less likelihood of slipping versus if we had that sprocket in the middle and it was only engaged over a shallow arc. So that can be an important consideration if you're designing an effective track system. We have another option here. Another option That's you may say teams take this year is to use individual wheels. Now this happens to be our Tetrix all-terrain tire. Um, it's a great solution for gripping the, the, the uh, playing field surface and not only that, but coming up against a wall like this crater wall here, getting up and over. Um, the tire comes fully assembled and it's foam field so you got some squishiness to it. It also comes with a hardware pack so it'll adapt to any of our Tetrix axles. So it really is a great choice. Another thing is uh, that we, we uh, need to mention too is this year's game, not only are we staying within the 18 by 18 by 18 inch cube like we've done in years past, but there's a new rule this year and that is a weight limit. Uh, we have a 42 pound weight limit which teams are really, really going to have to plan quite a bit up front to stay under that 42, point, or 42 pound excuse me, weight limit. So a tire like this, um, you get the size, you get the grip, but it's, uh, it's hollow in the middle, filled with a lot of air and foam, so it's very lightweight. Yeah. So it's, 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 it could be an effective tire uh, for you to uh, keep that robot under that weight limit this year. And that's a, uh, you mentioned a very important point, yes. that it's, it's going to be critical for them to think about that weight limit from the very beginning. It's, yes. it's far too easy of a trap to, to get into that you don't think about the weight until mm -hmm. my finished design, yes. 
and then all of a sudden I'm over by a pound or two pounds, and then again. I have yeah. to start all the way up back to the yeah. beginning. Put so your robot on a diet. It's a good Absolutely. point that we need exactly. to think about that Jenny weight yep. from the very yep. beginning. Yeah. Absolutely. So we can show you an example here. Um, Brian, who's a member of our R&D team, uh, built this example here, and this is a um, this is a, a really really cool build, if you ask me. Um, it's a great example of a four wheel drive robot. You notice we have a, a motor and a chain drive at every wheel here. So we got a lot of pulling power, we got a lot of climbing power. Another cool thing is he did, he has this three point mechanism at each corner and we've employed a spring here and so we've got a really, really cool rocking suspension system so it's, here. So it's like a Jeep going up the canyon walls. Absolutely, or, or I canyon, mean, this is something you may see, you know, a real space yeah. rover, a real space rover has to, has to uh, be able to traverse craters, um, climb, you know, uh, steep upgrades and, you know, grades and things like that. So this is a great, great solution. And another thing uh, that if you will notice here is that Brian went a step further with this. Uh, if, you, if you noticed, we mentioned that our, our tires were foam filled, that's how they come, but, but, but Brian went a step further. He actually took the tire off the rim, pulled out the foam, and he glued the tire using some rubber cement to the rim, uh -huh. and he put an, a pneumatic um, valve stem in it like you'd see on a bicycle. Yeah. He actually pumped these up with air. So you can notice they're, they're larger in diameter and a little bit shaped, a little bit rounder shaped. And so... So it, what advantage does that give as opposed to the foam filled one? Well, the advantage is as you can adjust the the, uh, the softness or the hardness, if you okay. will, of the Just tire. Just like a bike tire. So you can experiment with that. If your robot is having some trouble gripping or climbing, you can yeah. adjust it really quickly by putting more air in or letting more air out. And it just gives you a little softer bounce of your ride. Um, so, so your astronauts a, are happier. And it's just flat out cool. That's, you know, that's, that's, what, that's, cool. what, that's what I like about it. It also gives you more height, height clearance. Uh, mm -hmm. It raises you up. You can see the difference in the height between the tire with the, yeah. the air inside and not. So it, it gives you more ground clearance again. And that's going to help you when you get to the wall and, yeah, and have to over climb over something. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Sure. So um, one final example we have here is um, another, um, put that to take side. this off the side over here. Oh, wow. Now this is a, a larger robot. We we uh, we built this here in the R and D lab, and we have fun with it. It is a little bit larger than a typical FTC chassis, but nevertheless, it demonstrates a really good building principle here. In this in this particular robot, we have a six wheel design, and uh, a lot of rover, a lot of actual space rovers you see, they're they're actual six wheel designs. So um, so why would mm -hmm. the six wheels be better than four wheels? Wouldn't it just add more weight? It does add more weight. So again, you have to be very, very aware of the weight. Um, right. The six wheel here, every motor, every wheel is driven by an individual motor, and it just gives you a little bit more climbing power, if you okay. will. Um, it's a little bit simpler chassis as well, yeah. the, where the one we just looked at had some springs and some mechanism. Mm -hmm. This one's a, a, a rigid chassis, if you will. There is no suspension in it. But um, the, uh, the important thing, I guess, to point out about this chassis is, is the, uh, the middle wheel actually adds a, um, a really good uh, element when you're trying to climb up and over something. Um, okay. And uh, we talk about high centering in a vehicle. And um, um, high centering is simply um, when we're going up and over an obstacle, if we, if we uh, I, I think the, uh, the analogy I heard from somebody was like climbing a speed bump, if you will. Oh yeah, yeah. and if it gets stuck on there. Exactly, that's, so that's no think good. of a, a high speed bump. We get our front wheels over, uh -huh. but we don't yet have our back wheels over, what happens is, is that speed bump can actually sit in the center of our vehicle. Then you're stuck. Then you're stuck. So that middle wheel really, really helps prevent that. And so you can see our wheels are pretty close together. There's not mm -hmm. a lot of room. And so as we go up, as we go up and over that rock wall, yeah. you can really see to where that middle wheel is going to keep our rover keep moving up, up and over. That's exactly great. right. So, huh. um, yeah, uh, um, a lot of, lot of. Uh, a lot of plenty of power, uh, plenty of climbing ability, if you will, to get up and over that crater, which is going to be very, very important because not only do we need to get in the crater to get our silver and our gold, but the end game has a really um, good opportunity to score a major point bonus. If your robot can park completely within the crater, you get bonus points. That's great. So there's a lot of different options for what they can do with the chassis and wheel options. Absolutely. So hopefully that gives uh, teams some ideas and inspiration on things that maybe they want to research a little bit more yes. uh, about uh, strategies they can use. So we talked that so that's the first component, navigating, driving on the challenge. The next thing that we would talk about is actually collecting and um, collecting our those game scoring elements, elements right? Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. getting points. So let's yes. talk more mm -hmm. about that.